I don't usually put that many videos out anymore because I'm not trying to get a big um, YouTube following just for itself. I only put them out when I think I've got something uh, pertinent to say or something pertinent to show. And then, and I've spent a lot of this time this winter, it's uh, February 24th, 2021, I spent a lot of time this winter thinking about how bees winter in the context of having learned some information from a gentleman called Bernhard Mobus. Bernhard Mobus published some video, not videos, published some uh, ad articles in uh, ABJ in uh, 1998. And he was talking about how people misunderstand through ventilation as being of value compared to the way that bees winter in natural cavities where there is less air movement where the incidental heat that the clusters release gets gets um, into the tree and into the combs and into the honey and doesn't just get blown out as it does in conventional traditional latter-day beekeeping which has only been about for 150 years and hasn't been doing very well since Varroa mites came around. And so uh, this is kind of a, a testament to a lower ventilation, higher insulated system. Because today, February the 24th, it's just 42 degrees in my bee yard and I've worked the last couple of days so I wasn't here to see if it was this warm and if the bees were moving around this well. But you can see that in these colonies they only have this half to a third of a cork space at the top and similar amount of space at the bottom and yet they are clearly doing very well. They're alive. Now that goes against the through ventilation <laughs> method and my argument would be that in uh, this environment the bees are more likely to be able to be more mobile and move around. Mobus pointed out that in skep beekeeping days winter deaths would happen but they would be often be related to bees starving out completely and that this phenomena in which a colony dies of starvation when there's still food in the hive it is more uh, of an indictment against the through ventilation system than anything else. There is no way that in any kind of natural cavity where the bees are able to move around and according to some uh, research by Derek Mitchell, they don't perhaps don't even cluster until it gets down to about minus 40 Celsius outside because inside the incidental heat that's released allows them to be looser and more mobile. So just throwing it out there, I think that uh, we are better suited with a different model of ventilation than the through ventilation model that dominates at the moment, especially in light of the um, how things have changed since Varroa have been, been introduced. The old maxim that bees don't heat the hive, they only heat the cluster, might be better stated as the bees can't heat the hive. They can't heat the hive because there's too much ventilation in it. The heat that would normally just be dissipated around inside a natural cavity is incidental and the bees don't, haven't had to evolve to work to heat, the, heat a hive. They, they uh, evolved with the benefit of that warmer environment that happened incidentally to how the heat lost them and moved into the surrounding area. I'm not a physicist, I'm just doing the best to make understanding of how this happened. I didn't get this far 
by being a clever f physicist, I got this far by being, uh, being lucky. Now I'm trying to work out why I've been so lucky. Thank you.